Hello and welcome to this episode of Dr. K's Psychobabble. Today we're going to be looking at Erickson's stage of industry versus inferiority. Now Erickson was a student of Freud's and he's probably most famous among many things that he's done for his stages of psychosocial development. In fact, he was the individual that actually came up with the term psychosocial. If you're familiar with the work of Freud, you know that his stages of human development were called psychosexual stages. Erickson differed from Freud, and this ended up being uh, one of the uh, famous differences that occurred between the two of them. The um, Different, different from that Erickson felt that social interactions uh, with the world and the world's expectations were more important. So he said that the, re the interaction, the driving force of development was an interaction between social forces and psycho so, and, and psychological development. And then we get the phrase psychosocial. So he has his eight stages of psychosocial development, including trust versus mistrust, autonomy versus shame and doubt, initiative versus guilt, and today's topic, industry versus inferiority. Now, industry versus inferiority is the um, fourth stage in childhood that Erickson refers to, and uh, it's an important culmination of the development that has happened up until that time. So this particularly, particular uh, area is very, very uh, critical as the person transitions into the next stage of development, which we'll be talking at another time. So uh, industry versus inferiority is the uh, time of life from approximately age five to 13. And the virtue that's being developed is competency. Essentially, the individual is in the first sort of uh, experience of recognizing what they're good at. And what they're good at is not simply an objective analysis of uh, what they're skilled at and what they're not skilled at. It's actually within the social context of being compared to others. Now understand, look at the age of five. I mean, traditionally speaking, that's when children start going to school. And so school plays an incredible part in this initiation to the process by which you will be evaluated uh, to standards that exist out there. That at, based on your age, there are going to be expectations put on you by society, by the social expectations that are present in your culture, that you're going to be able to do and be and uh, understand certain things at a certain age, and you will be evaluated based on those standards as opposed to just maybe what was happening at home. There's standards at home too, but at home you're not being compared to uh, this sort of objective analysis as to what society uh, feels you should be doing at that point. In addition, what also happens at this point is that people are introduced to peers. They had been up until that time, but now they are interacting with other individuals. We group people together by age and we group people together by ability. So at this early stage in five and straight through until junior high when we start going into uh, the next stage of development, throughout this time, people are grouped together with people who are like them and they're categorized related to their peers and they develop social relationships with those individuals and those individuals are they serve as comparisons to how am I doing in relation to my peers at this point so we're, we're seeing the world of sociology coming in and impacting the person's self-evaluation in their deter in terms of determining what they're good at uh, what are they competent at as the, the, the virtue that is being developed at this time? And finally, in, in terms of the, um, the transition from the nuclear family influence into the schools, into peers, and maybe sleepovers, and, you know, and those kinds of things as the, wor as the world becomes increasingly distant from the, from the home, these concentric circles moving out 
from the, the, the home as a center for socialization, the child is being exposed to new role models. Uh, they may be exposed to new role models of parenting, new role models of teaching, values, and norms, and expectations that they're being exposed to that may be in line or out of line with the norms, values, and expectations that exist in the home. Now, this can sometimes create some issues if they're out of alignment, and so some people choose to homeschool their kids and part of the reason why they may choose to homeschool their kids is because they want to reduce the influence of those uh, external norms on the norms that they're trying to build in their child and um, to, to be for, so the parents want to maintain a little bit more control over that now being that this is the the uh, fourth stage in childhood, as uh, Erickson's theory outlines. We look at these first four stages now, and we'll see the first stage of trust versus mistrust, the second stage, autonomy versus shame and doubt, the third stage, initiative versus guilt, and the stage we're talking about now, which is industry versus inferiority. And these group together, the the basically the building blocks and foundation of the concept of identity. And so, or at least let's say the first concept of identity that the individual encounters. So building on those four blocks, the individual now um, has what it takes to build their first sense of self based on trust, autonomy, initiative, and industry. So is the world a good place and trustful? It, can I do things on my own? Do the thoughts that I have that are coming to me in the, in the ideas and motivations that I have, are they worthy? And then finally, what am I good at? And we're going to see how those transition into the foundation in which we make our first sense of identity uh, when, when we move into stage five of Erickson's theory.